Ever since ChatGPT entered our world in November 2022, AI has been revolutionizing every facet of our professional and personal lives. The question is, where is AI going? How should we respond to the AI development? In this video, I will share with you the next two stages of AI development, the timeline of their realization, and the mindset required so you can gain the most from them. In order to see where it will go, we need to see where it came from and observe it from an elevated perspective. This bird's eye view will allow us to clearly see the past as well as the impending future. The progression of information technology reflects the changes of how we as humans interact with computers. So, how did we communicate with computers in the past? In the first stage, which I call pre-PC stage, the interface to communicate between humans and computers was the programming language. We have to know the programming language to write the code to communicate with computers. That means most people at that time couldn't communicate with computers because they didn't have the coding skills. Luckily, Microsoft, Windows, and Office came along, especially with the introduction of smartphones. They dramatically lowered the bar for humans to communicate with computers. At this stage, which I call PC slash mobile stage, the interface between human and computer is not a programming language anymore. Instead, it is graphical user interface. In this stage, as software end user, we don't need to learn program language. We just need to know which button to click on the PC or tap on the smartphone screen. Also, we might not even rely on the graphical user interface on the screen. We could simply speak to issue voice command. For example, Alexa, play the movie Matrix, or Hey Siri, send a text message to Eric. Moreover, when we play certain video games, we could use a physical motion to communicate. Now we're entering the third stage, which I call AI stage. In this stage, the interface between human and computer is not programming language. It is not graphical user interface. Rather, it's a natural language. In this stage, if we want to perform a task in Excel, we don't click a button or write the function. We simply type a sentence, which products were the most profitable this quarter. Subsequently, Excel performs all the necessary computation in the background to deliver the correct results. If you have been keeping up with my channel, you may have come across my other videos, where I demonstrated how ChatGPT Data Analyst or Microsoft Copilot Pro could perform Excel work using just natural language inputs. AI is far from perfect at this time. We are merely at the very beginning of AI development, but it will improve, get better, and the pace of this advancement might surprise many of us. Now, what is stage after AI? Well, we haven't arrived at yet. Significant progress are already being made towards the next frontier, the BCI stage, or brain-computer interface stage. In this stage, the interface between human and computer is definitely not program language, nor graphical user interface, and not even natural language. With natural language, you have to master that language, be able to speak or write that language. However, in the BCI stage, the interface between human and computers is the mind. We can just use the mind to communicate with the computer directly. But how does this work? I'm sure you have heard about Elon Musk, the man behind Tesla's electric cars and reusable rockets. He also founded a company named Neuralink, which has pioneered a brain-computer interface device. This device can be implanted into the brain, enabling the mind to communicate directly with the computer wirelessly. Next, I'll share a brief video of a young man named Nolan Arbaugh. In 2016, a diving accident left him paralyzed from the shoulders down. However, three months ago, he had a Neuralink BCI device known as Tenepathy implanted into his brain. Now he can play chess and the video game Civilization VI on a computer. 
Remarkably, all of this is accomplished solely through his mind, without any physical connection to the computer. It just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on a cursor, <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen, and it would move where I wanted it to. Um, which Neuralink is not the only organization implanting BCI device on human brain. In Switzerland, Lausanne University Hospital successfully implanted a BCI device into a paralyzed patient back in 2021 and enabling the patient to walk again. Before we delve into the next stage after BCI, let's take a moment to discuss the timeline of the initial four stages. When are we going to reach the BCI stage? Again, in order to predict the future, we have to know the past. The first computer was invented in 1822, which was 200 years ago, and a personal computer came into the life of the general public in 1983. So it took 160 years to go from the pre-PC stage to PC stage. And ChatGPT hit the mass population in the year 2023, which marks the beginning of AI stage. So the PC mobile stage lasted for about 40 years. When are we going to arrive at the BCI stage? My prediction is that it will take about 20 years for BCI device to be implanted into the general public. In these 20 years, many paralyzed patients will receive BCI implants to help them to regain the capability to use computer, to walk, to use their arms and hands. After that, normal and healthy people may start to get BCI implants to augment their bodily functions. Even Elon Musk claimed he planned to someday receive one of Neuralink's implants himself. Just picture that, Elon Musk wearing the Iron Man suit. So my prediction is that we will reach the BCI stage around the year 2043. By that time, AI will be quite mature. We will not be using software as we do today. I do not believe we have the need to learn Excel in order to use Excel. We will just tell AI in natural language to use Excel for us. Now, what will be the next stage interface after BCI? We started with programming language, then move on to graphical user interface. Besides typing with keyboard and mouse, we started touching the screen directly with our fingers and using voice and emotion and then to the point of just using the thoughts created in our brain. You see the trend here. We are gradually cutting away the intermediaries between human and computers, to the point of even not using our basic senses of touch and voice and emotion. In the next stage, I believe we will further cut away the intermediary of brain. To predict the next interface, we need to know what our true essence is. As human. To me, our true essence is not our body, not our physical mind. There is something underneath that which is more fundamental, which is the consciousness. Consciousness is perceived through brain, but consciousness is not created by brain. So my prediction for the next stage interface between human and computer is consciousness. We will bypass the brain intermediary to communicate with computer just through our consciousness. By that, I mean we do not need a BCI implant to be embedded into our brain. As a naturally born human, we will be able to, without any implant, simply send and receive intention through our consciousness. You may find this a little bit too much of a stretch. Let's take it one step back. Let's first look at the communication between two human beings. When you were a little kid and you loved your parents so much, or when you were a young adult, you fell in love with your boyfriend or girlfriend, or you may have a kid now and you love him or her so much, you might have experienced this. Sometimes, without saying a single word, you knew exactly what he or she was thinking. When he did say something, you might feel that he was literally pulling words from your mouth. We as human, when we are filled with love, 
we are able to communicate with another person just by pure consciousness. That's possible. Now, in terms of communicating with computer, which is matter, how would that be possible? You ask. To me, everything in the universe is consciousness. Computer, matter, they are just consciousness vibrating at a different level. One famous physicist, David Bohm, said, "Matter is frozen light." So to me, computer is just consciousness vibrating at a lower level. Our body is frozen consciousness. When we raise vibrational frequency of the consciousness, it's like transforming from ice cube to water and to steam, where it can interact with things outside of the physical boundaries. Because higher frequency consciousness, like the steam, has no boundaries. If we raise our vibrational frequency to the level of pure love, unconditional love, we are able to communicate with anyone, anything, including human, animals, plants, and minerals. So I call this stage as a stage of love, pure love. Unconditional love, love is the ultimate interface to interact with the universe. The renowned inventor and physicist Nikola Tesla, about 100 years ago, has revealed the secret to us. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. In the early stages, we use programming language. We use graphical user interface. We use natural language. We use the BCI device. With those interfaces, we use the finger to type on the keyboard and control the mouse. We use the finger to touch on the screen. We use our mouth to speak our voice. We use physical motion. We use our brain to communicate with computers. Now, in the stage of love. With interface being consciousness, what do we use? We use our heart. When you close your eyes, shut down the five senses, focus on your heart, you will feel it. Now the question is, how do we raise our vibrational frequency? We just need to extend our love from our children, family to go beyond the circle of relatives and friends, go beyond our country. Beyond human species to animals, plants, and minerals, then we will be able to interact with computer through consciousness. You may think raising vibrational frequency to interact with non-organic objects as impossible. Have you noticed opera singers raising their frequency to shatter glass? Oh, you may think shattering glass with a voice is one thing; communicating with other objects is different. Actually, people have done it in the past. Two thousand years ago, and two thousand five hundred years ago, there were people who raised their vibrational frequency to the level of pure love, unconditional love. They were able to communicate with everyone and everything. So, how do we respond to AI development with tools like ChatGPT, Microsoft Copilot? Many people embrace it. Some people reject it. They emphasize that AI could not do this, could not do that. It is true that at this time, there are many tasks AI could not do or do well yet. But I believe the most beneficial mindset is we need to learn and grow with it. So when AI matures, we are maturing with it. Otherwise, we may end up like some of the older people now who do not know how to use computers or smartphones. For the BCI stage, most of us, as individuals, we may not be able to do anything to contribute. But if you think you will just sit there and wait, that's a wrong attitude, because we do not have to wait. For the BCI stage to pass, before we embrace the love stage, as a species, we may not reach the love stage until hundreds or even thousands of years after. But as individuals, 
We can and we should now embrace it, practice it, focus on our hearts, feel the love, extend the love beyond our families, beyond our countries, beyond our human species, to animals, plants, and minerals. When you, as an individual, in your lifetime, you may or may not reach the love stage. But your progress is helping the human species to reach the love stage much sooner, maybe only within a few hundred years, instead of the many hundreds or even thousands of years. So, in which year are we going to reach the love stage? It really depends on what actions you and I and every one of us take. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If my analysis and prediction spark your interest or touch your heart. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you feel it resonates with you, please share with your friend on social media to spread the word. I'd love to hear what you think, whether you agree or disagree. I will be very happy to read them in the comments. Thank you.